Hello, you guys. This is It's Real with Jordan and Demi. I'm with Jordan and Surf Mesa. You may know him from his single, ILY, in other words, I love you, uh, which gains popularity on TikTok. And he also just played Surf uh, Hangout Fest, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of fun. <laughs> How did it go? <laughs> it was great. I've never been to Alabama before. Well, let's um, talk about let's talk about festivals in general. You you're doing yeah. um you're doing Lollapalooza, you're doing outside lands. This is your kind of your second festival season because your your viral success happened kind of in the last part of 2020. So what is it like this year as opposed to last year now that you have a little bit so, more establishment? Yeah, I mean, definitely it's a wave of learning experiences because like before COVID, I had never played a show. Um, I was like a college student living with these producers who are also making dance music. And, um, you know, fast forward after COVID, everything opened up. And that was my first wave of shows slash like first summer. Um, and it was a great experience to just get out there and like know how to like dj in front of people honestly like learning how to dj in the first place really so um that was you know kind of a steep learning curve um getting to be comfortable being out there and like doing like running the show really um so it's been about like 30 shows since then and this next wave i'm i'm very confident you know i'm coming out swinging and i'm, I'm prepared with like this new set new edits, new music, um, and just kind of this new look. And I'm, I'm excited to show people more about Surf Mesa and this project that has developed since the last wave of shows and this these last two years since IOI, honestly. And um, it's, it's just really the beginning, I guess, because it's only like the second festival season. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And it's just been a learning experience, but um, I'm uh, I'm proud of what I've learned so far. I know I I know I, I read in an article you did uh, an interview you did a while back that you had this kind of anxiety, maybe anxiety is too strong of a word, but you you thought about you know what happens. You had that one huge song, you know that I, I love you, baby, and you're worried about being a one hit wonder, which is not the case. You've done collaborations with Gus Dapperton and you've uh, Madison Beer. Um, and I feel like you're kind of at this crossroads where you could become this kind of go-to producer, like almost, I feel like you could almost do like a Pharrell type thing where you're both a solo artist and a producer. Is that kind of the way you see yourself? Yeah. I mean, so I got into this whole thing, like when I was 13, um, I have a lot of older siblings and they just showed me early in the day, what's cool, like what software is like, you know, how to, how to make music, um, how to make YouTube videos and all that back then. So it has been a long time coming with the foundation and building that all. So IOI is just one product of what that can be about. And, um, my good friend medicine put it pretty, um, he, he, he explained to me like a good perspective of it all. And, I think like with IOI, there's just so many factors that go into a song ex exploding the way it did. And it's just about like just the climate of music. I mean, for example, back then it was COVID. Everyone's in their bedrooms. They're listening to like the most like chill stuff. Um, TikTok and people making videos. Nobody had anything else to do than to make videos in the room. So there was a lot to that went into it. But um, I think... I think uh, it's just it's just one product that's come of it, and like I'm excited for this next wave of music and to show everything that I've learned. And I'm sitting on the the, the my favorite music that I've made so far, and um, there's a handful of it, and it's uh, I'm just eager to put it out and to really hear what people think because I'm I'm excited about it. I don't know. There's a there's a lot to digest. I can feel the anticipation in your voice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, On the yeah. internet, um, you're referred to a, a lot as a TikTok sensation mm -hmm. and kind of like an internet kind of sensation. So how do you feel about that title? And also what are, what's like the secret to TikTok? Because a lot of people don't what's know. Jordan knows we've had this conversation. <laughs> we don't know much about TikTok. We probably should know. Um, so tell us what that app is all about and what it means to you. 
Um, every day I'm I'm told to post more on TikTok. See, I don't really know a lot about it. Obviously, it's changed the way. It's all about volume, right? You have to mm -hmm. just keep pounding it, which yeah. is something we're terrible at, by the way. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely, um, you know, an interesting climate because you can't deny that labels are changing the way they're rolling everything out. There's no such thing as like the classic guerrilla marketing anymore. Everything mm -hmm. is now, how can you take a 15 second clip of this song and make it pop in this video? Um, and it's even changing the way how songs are written now. So you get in a room and people are mm -hmm. like, let's start the song off with this sample. Like Harry Styles is the number one song right now. And if you listen to like the beginning of it, like why is that sample there? It's like the, come on Harry, we want to, do something and um it just makes you like think like was that for like a video purpose it's just um, there for a tiktok sound you can like yeah yeah and so i don't know there's it's just kind of makes you um think like was that is it like a layer to the song like it's a great track but like i don't know what i don't know so what, what is that about but um there, there's just a lot to it it's a deep hole um but i don't know i mean me personally like there it's just impossible to deny that like i got extremely lucky and i came across this video of emily singing in her room and then i just thought it'd be cooler if there was vocal chops and house drums behind it and that's what came of it and before that i wasn't really a, like a tiktoker i don't really consider myself a tiktoker because <laughs> the videos i post are just like like something you would put on your fence though um but i I believe it's it's an interesting climate and um i don't know i don't like i don't know how to make a song to like pop off the way Let me ask you this you know? question can you make a song now without worrying about how it will be received on tiktok or reels i guess is kind of the, the instagram answer to tiktok can you like come up with a melody and be like independently of tiktok this is a great song or are you always thinking like how it would be received how it would be used by tiktokers um i mean i i i think about if i like it or not <laughs> and that's good you know, answer that's, yeah that's the uh, that's what matters most i mean like yeah you can have a demo song pitched to you and it has this viral moment of the song and it's just how fulfilling is that if you're gonna put that out like do you really stand behind it when you're telling people to go stream it mm -hmm. like it it shines through and everything everything comes to surface i think um what i'm excited about this new music is that it feels like me and it feels like something that is a result of all this all these years of the sessions and what i've learned from playing shows and meeting artists and learning about their music and diving into other genres and subgenres of culture and just it it goes to i don't know it's like I don't I don't really think about TikTok at all really in my writing process like it's almost the last thing that like comes to mind um I mean a little bit really because I'm I don't know like I I want I want people who listen and look out for me and are just fans and I want like people who just really care and those people stay and those people like will support you other than like a TikTok fan, they'll just scroll after f literally two seconds. Um, so I don't know. It's uh, it's it's interesting to shape a uh, a fan base around TikTok. Um, I think it's just important to fulfill yourself first. Um, it's your artist project, and you know, it's just it's it's what exists forever after you put it out. And I want to be proud of in thirty years when I'm reflecting on everything that I've done, and I don't you know, want to regret putting like a two second little meme sound in a song <laughs> because wow. for what in 30 years like it's funny you say that my friend the other day she said the only people you have to impress are is your eight-year-old self and your 80 year old self that just like cool I, like the nerve. I wanted to know about yeah. your love for technology though because it was it's known that you were going to study technology and then and how does that translate to your falling in love with production um yeah so i always uh i guess i grow i grew up with like a family computer um i like growing up i'm a huge like gamer i still am um i stream sometimes um 
again my older siblings really introed me to a lot and that was like runescape and world of warcraft and twitch and setting up a live stream um high school i took some computer science classes and i thought i had this burning passion to program but that you know, <laughs> wow. that was i was short-lived i uh applied for some computer science programs but um i i got in and then i i snapped my tibia and fibula right after i graduated high school and then i couldn't go anymore so i moved to la <laughs> to pursue music and then as one does um, when they break their leg <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly um but the crossover was pretty transparent because i loved the idea of um production and i uh I just was fascinated by sitting in my room and like, I don't know, like in my high school days, just like skipping class and like just, I don't know, being in my room and just um, making music and learning about how a virtual synthesizer works and creating something that wasn't there before. Um, and it was just this opportunity in my life to really just sit and tread water and just think about what I wanted to do. And again, it surfaced where I, uh, I had more of a passion to just taste what I was born with and rather than uh, kind of conform because like I didn't really have the best grades in high school. And so it kind of felt like when I was, quote, wanting to go to computer science for school, it was like, like that doesn't make sense. It, I mean, like <laughs> it's a lot of pressure when you're a senior and you're graduating because every any, anything people talk about is just like, what are you doing after like your teachers the parents of your friends even your own parents your friends like you want to kind of conform a little bit and so it makes sense and you just you're just trying to impress just to say like yeah I'm you want to tell principal. your parents and your teachers that you're going to pursue a career that's lucrative and secure yeah exactly and so, yeah yeah you say what you need to say so i mean i wanted to go to school mm -hmm. for like music and i wanted to go to icon collective which is a school down here in burbank and it's like it teaches production and i like i begged my parents to go and they looked into it and they're like this does not get you a job <laughs> like, i was like well your job is gig so i probably Do you wouldn't. rub yeah. your parents nose in your success you're like i'm not even done with <laughs> college yet and look at me mom <laughs> they're so proud of me um uh, my dad has a music background a little bit he uh, yeah he was a jazz guy wasn't he or is yeah. yeah so so just like a side gig um it's not like his main job um you know if my dad was like i don't know some like jazz some legend i would I'd definitely say so but he was always um just playing the saxophone throughout the house and it was cool to be around that and he just put on like records on his record player and kind of introduced me to that so you know, for me to be able to bring him to a show and play in front of him, it's like really a cool opportunity and it's fun. With that background, are you much of a, a, a crate digger? Do you have LPs? Do you look for really rare sounds from like 70s records? Or do you mm. even? I, like so I think that's a really interesting world to dive into. Um, I a lot of times sit down and just, you know, come up with chords and like dig for patches to make those chords even a little bit cooler but um i've been watching a lot of like disclosures live streams and they have so many cool stories of how they came up with ideas and like production wise so i think they they produced uh blue world by mac miller by going to a record store in on melrose and they just came up with this like uh, it's this group i forget who but they bought a record and then took it home and just sampled this uh uh this this chord progression and then put like a cool tremolator and compressor on it and they it was like the foundation of the whole song and so i think yeah i mean that'd be really cool to kind of extract from old records and like it's, hard, it's not like i can say i've never done that before obviously ily is just a hard chorus rip but um yeah yeah but it's it's cool i think like there's a there's a lot to pull from things that have been done um I think there's a quote that's like uh it's like it's like the like genius is steel or something like that it yeah. was like creators yeah create, uh, i don't know but uh it, yeah so i'm i'm definitely in into the idea um i think first is getting a record player <laughs> yeah, you get started? You get started? yeah yeah
You talked about um, doing live shows and kind of like your first kind of go at, you know, that realm of being an artist. Um, tell us more about that because you also mentioned something about a new look. Is this, yeah. what, what, what did you mean by that? Um, so I think uh, it's easy to kind of get on stage and play top 40 Beatport songs mm -hmm. and play whatever is hot right now. But the reality is like, there's just some dude in Vegas doing the same thing at some club in front of like 13 people. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to make my show feel more personal to me. And with that, I want to incorporate like my more of my unreleased, more of my edits I've been making. Um, I want to play songs that like have my touch. And so these last few weeks, I've been making edits of uh, songs and they're like, <laughs> it's, it's specifically songs that like you kind of almost forgot about it, but you're really glad you didn't forget when you hear it a little bit so i i did this like big room edit of kids by Papa mgmt oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no um so kids by mgmt mm, that's um awesome. yeah and then do you know the song uh pumping blood by no 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 mm -mm. i don't know the song no i will uh, know it once you come out with the remix though yeah yeah so um again there's just these songs that you know the chorus in the back of your head and then i uh i just like remix it and give it you know this energy and this mm -hmm. this house vibe to it um and then eyes by cascade do you know that song i don't think eyes. so it was like one of his earlier fire and ice album songs um but i that's my goal is to really just have this euphoric driving emotion behind my performance and i think when people come i i want them to be surprised and i want them to walk away and I want to like have them reflect on the videos they took. Um, oh, I like and, that little burn right there. Like, you, you know, people are taking videos. You want them to rewatch them and like get something <laughs> out of them. Just some, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's cool. Honestly, every time I play, I go through my like, um, I go through people's stories that mention me, and it's like it's really cool to see from the crowd's uh, POV and to mm -hmm. like see the kind of time they had. Um, it's, it's also probably helpful to see what your stage show looks like from the crowd so you can make adjustments or if there's something that you know oh, you yeah. can improve on or whatever. Yeah. I, I'm I'm my hardest cr critic. I like <laughs> everything I do. I'm like, why do I look like that? Like why am I just <laughs> I don't know. I think we all <laughs> you have yeah. any funny yeah. stories from playing live this past 30 shows? Um a little bit. Maybe uh I don't know. I don't know about like any during. awkward moments or uh, fan funny fan stories. Jimmy's trying there's, to dish her some tea, and I don't know if he's there. <laughs> um, I mean, there's just like well, let's see. Here's another question: mm -hmm. Who have you met from these shows that you're like, wow, this is cool that I'm getting to like hang out with this person? Uh, do you know the DJ EDX? No, we're we're like I oh. feel so dumb because we're not like EDM oh, no. hardcore EDM people. Oh, got you. Okay. Jimmy's in a rock band, and oh yeah, so yeah, um, it's not our native world. Yeah, I mean, there's just like, okay, for example, in Miami Music Week, um, there was a time I was just going to Alesso's set for Ultra. Um, Alesso and I have the same day-to-day -day manager. And so it was all family that I was there and I like took the boat over with him. Um, so I was just hanging out like backstage. And then I started talking to this guy named Adam and Adam owns Ultra. He runs the show for X amount of years and he was familiar with my name and my work. And I, he asked me, you know, he was like, are you around Sunday? And I was like, yeah, I'm there. And he said, someone just pulled out if you want to come play. And that was my in with Ultra. I wasn't like wow. booked before. And so I was like, I'm there in a heartbeat. That is wild. So, it's wild when, when someone like in a position like that, like is already familiar with you. And you you think in your head like, oh, you have to you have to explain yourself to everyone. No one knows who I am in your own head, you know. And then yeah, it must exactly. be strange just, to realize that. that people. I think Kate is also yeah. with Ultra as well. Is that how you know? Kate and Steven, I think we spoke about our friends, Kate and Steven. Um, so Ultra Ultra Music Festival is separate than Ultra Publishing. Um, mm -hmm. But Ultra is just the, yeah, Ultra is the festival. And so this guy, Adam, owns Ultra. And yeah, I talked to him and he was like, 
he he booked me for Sunday, and then that's that was the story of how I played Ultra. But mm, um, okay, so not the label, the festival. Yeah, right. I know that they're both called Ultra, but um, yeah, that that was just the festival, and it was a blast. It was so much fun to play that. Now, I you uh you talked about you know getting in different genres, and you have a really diverse musical background. I think what's really interesting is you don't have a whole lot of body of work. You've only been putting out music for a couple of years, but I feel like there's a pretty big variety of sounds, even within the EDM electronic world that you're living in. Some of your song, you know, you, you came out with the song that had that kind of like lo-fi YouTube study beats kind of vibe to it. And now you're, some of your tracks, uh, like the song you do with Gus Dapperton has more of like a house feel. So um, are you kind of out there wanting to explore, even within the electronic world, different sounds within that bigger umbrella? Yeah, definitely the sound I chase. I mean, again, it's just been a a steep learning experience these two years since ILY came out. Um, getting into music, I was making dubstep when I was 13. Just like that was the instant genre. I was like, I want to make. Yeah, eight, that would have been eight years ago. So you've been right in the middle of that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, I then kind of got into high school and I was making like lo-fi electronic music um kind of like that down mid tempo like you know 90 bpm stuff that was just felt euphoric um i was listening to a lot of odessa cosbo shalu um so I, I wasn't yet in that driving like house uh bpm yet and then mm -hmm. um coming out to la that's when i started to making like a lot of like that progressive stuff with uh with that those like house drums and then um so with the releases yeah i think I've I've learned about myself to create an emotion um, in my music that feels euphoric, um, kind of melancholy, and then um, my production behind it is driving. And I think with the the emotion and with the driving energy creates a a product of what I want Surf Mesa to stand behind. Um, and then the handful of songs. I'm sitting on right now really showcase that and that's what I'm excited to put out. So, you know, what to expect is exactly that. And I'm excited to incorporate that incorporate that with uh my my shows and just see how people react and it's it's, you know, it's a lot of fun <laughs> to be excited about this because um yeah, I know I know the songs I have out now are very diverse like there's like a pop songs with like Madison Beer and then more driving songs with uh, Bipolar Sunshine and Gus. Um, so there's definitely that melody accent from, you know, Carried Away with Madison into the into the driving with like Marching Band with Nitty. And uh, it's just, uh, it's like a blanket product of what I'm about. And so, yeah, the, this unreleased music is just uh, kind of like a hybrid child of the and it's exciting to me because we have no idea what this music sounds like. And in six months, when it when it's out or whatever, we'll be like, oh, he was like working on that like while we were talking, yeah. you know, or he's sitting on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I wish I could send you guys right now. Um, yeah. There's so many songs and like even the collabs, I'm, I'm really excited about the artists I'm getting to work with because I've been streaming them for like a decade. Um, and I've always wanted to collab with like a band, for example, and like now that it's coming together, it's it's so fun to kind of just <laughs> make this child, and like I'm excited to give birth, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> also, okay, so speaking of Madison Beer, I saw that you did a piece for Teen Vogue that was super funny with her. Um, I kind of seemed like it was soon after you guys made this song. I wanted to know what was it like collaborating with her, um, and what was she like in real life? Yeah, you know, I feel like people have a lot of assumptions about her, her presence, social media, but like you having worked with her, what's she like? Yeah, so the song came about before we in person met each other. Um, originally, it was a song with Alina Baraz. If you know who that is, I'm a really big fan of her. She has like a a great EP with Gala Matias, who produced it, and um, maybe you'll you'll be familiar with her. So it was originally a collab with Alina Baraz, um, and the emotion behind the lyrics and just kind of the sonics really felt like Madison's vibe. Um, my manager Mo reached out to Oscar, her manager, 
and they got in touch and Madison heard it and she loved it. So at the time I was in Seattle visiting family, but I still got to work on the song from like my home studio. Um, I recorded like a guitar piece for a bridge and like new chords for the bridge and then kind of finished the production throughout the whole song. And then that was cool to kind of be able to work on a, on a song from my childhood bedroom after I had already like moved away and after I'd been with the label. Um, so Madison got with her vocal producer and finished the her, finished her cuts and um, and it, and then we met and then we did like photo shoots together, shot a music video, and she's the sweetest. She's just like honestly really down to earth and hardworking. Um, and I think everything in her world she takes very seriously. And so that's you know if anything that's like what to withdraw and um it was, it was really cool meeting her so she's crushing it really so she just like finished her world tour and she finished up in europe and yeah i wish her the best we're still in touch and she and and then that song is now in a movie <laughs> with addison ray and uh on that netflix movie he's all that which is like a spin-off of she's all that, that oh, wow. movie. yeah it's it's crazy that song is like the first audio that plays when you hit play like from netflix it goes like the netflix intro and then it just starts playing carried away <laughs> so you can't escape it you can't yeah, escape I can, it i can't escape it well no i i <laughs> I, I can escape that song i can't escape <laughs> that's that's true it's yeah. a blessing and a curse but yeah, right. um i think that you know there was a time when you know people had uh when eminem couldn't escape you know, my name is, and then he had, you know, 20 other songs that people know. So, you know, it, yeah, it's a temporary thing. Hopefully. Absolutely. I'm, I'm assuming, assuming with you, I think that your, your, your direction is so pure. Sometimes I'm not naming names. Demi and I come across people who, you know, are there for the internet clout and mm -hmm. are there strictly because they had a hook, they put it together, they kind of got lucky and they're just riding the wave. You are not riding the wave you're creating more things for yourself. Thank you, man. I, yeah, I mean, it's a story that's been written of the whole, you have a moment, you have a song that's going around the world and what's to follow it. And you've seen it with the Chainsmokers who had Selfie. And before that, they were just remixing indie songs, um, which were still great. Like it had this new wave of big room energy to it. But Selfie then rocked the world with this like crazy upbeat with current lyrics talking about Instagram filters. Um, and then I, I kind of got to relate with them, relate to them with this is that from there, they have to take a step back and write the story of what they want to be about. And Roses came about that shook the world and then uh, Closer happened. And so it's just like more stamps of solidifying yourself in the scene. Um, and it's really important to like keep that up. So yeah it, it's it's been interesting following up IOI, but i'm i'm confident that how i've been doing that feels like me um and if it if it didn't feel like me i would have a hard time outliving that because there's been songs come my like coming my way that just sound like hits but like out of nowhere and it wouldn't feel like me at all and like again it's like that TikTok moment if you're gonna put out a song that's just like for the quick little TikTok moment or whatever like Seconds. dude nobody cares like it's it's if people become a fan of the sound they don't become a fan of you <laughs> coming from seattle right to la you're you know super young you've got your career popping off how have you kind of been taking in the la scene and like navigating through that as a young adult um yeah do you enjoy it do you ever get sick of la um i mean the way i am i'm i'm pretty introverted and that's kind of how i got into music in the first place in gaming um like i just chilled in my room a lot of times like in high school um so coming out here it's i behave the same a little bit like i leave my apartment to travel and then i leave my apartment to like i don't know like go to sessions um I, like i have friends and i have people that live out here that are also in the music scene that you know i hang out with um but i don't really like submerge myself in like the quote like la scene 
and with that it's kind of hard to get sick of something you're not really a part of um yeah it exists and it's like you can't deny it's around you um because it's like yes there's people that here are here because they make like videos on the internet but um i i don't know i just live here because like my manager and label lives here and it's important to be based here for sessions and I, that's um, my favorite quote you said people in LA make, make videos for the internet. <laughs> that's a thing that like, that's what people yeah. in LA do. That's like what the yeah. purpose of living in LA is. Yeah. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty low key. Like I just, I just chill in. I don't really go out a lot. Before we, before we let you go, we got to let you go here in a second, but you got this home studio set up in your, where you kind of in your dining room, kitchen area. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So kind of tell us your setup here, your, your, your keyboard. Is that a yeah. full keyboard or is that a just yeah. a controller? What do you got going on? It's a MIDI controller, 88 keys. Uh, specifically, specifically got this one because of the weighted keys. Um, it feels like you're playing a real piano. Nice. Um, and it just goes into um, like the synths that I load up or any patches. Uh, these are CDJs that I practice sets on or just mix when people are here. Um, and then... I, I guess here I, I don't know if I could show you here. Let's go, oh, Flint. Rock. I'm I'm messing all this. Sure. All right. So oh I wow! Got Look at that. A Yamaha HS8s, um, a Apollo twin interface, um, some <laughs> external hard drives, <laughs> another Apollo. Um, this is the SM7 mic. Um, <laughs> okay my mic is or my webcam you have great not... lighting in that room too oh yeah yeah i guess no. so um so yeah I, I work here um this isn't like my permanent studio i used to work from my like management office where they had like in wall pmc speakers and kind of great acoustics but um when i was like apartment hunting i really was keen on living in a loft and so the acoustics here are not the best and the neighbors don't help either with paper thin walls so yeah the, yeah that's, yeah <laughs> i can't really like bump it in here but it's been doing the trick so far and uh yeah i'm, I'm excited to have a, a permanent studio again <laughs> <laughs> i bet we wish you the best yeah, yeah. of luck and uh thank you for joining us on it's real jordan and demi and you, yeah, yeah. what you, what you got outside lands and Lollapalooza? What else you got going on in the summer? You want to plug? Um, I'll be in Malaysia and Jakarta for a few festivals out there, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I've never been there. Um, Electric Forest in Michigan, June. Um, and just some unannounced stuff as well. So. I'm excited for this season and to bring out this next, you know, live show and share this music and share the edits and just see how people react. Yeah. We look forward to it. <laughs> thanks so much guys. All right. Thanks sir. We'll, we'll talk to you later. All right. Later guys. Peace. All right. Bye. That was surf Mesa. You catch him all over the place this summer festivals shows. I looked on his Instagram and he was playing like in the winter, what DJs do is they play like pool parties in Miami and stuff, mm -hmm. which is, I really missed I missed out by not being a, a, a club DJ. You too. You could, you're, you're, you're missing a life. You know? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's super insightful though. You can just tell that like beneath everything beneath his artist project, he is a real producer and artist sort of like yeah. what you said with um, Pharrell. You know, maybe we have a future Kanye or Pharrell right here. You never yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Demi, before we exit the show here, let's give a little preview. What You were here. You're in New York now. You spent some time in L.A. recently. What did we do? What can you tell the people that we, we worked <laughs> on while you were here? Oh, my goodness. Me and Jordan, we, we worked a ton. We did some episodes for a new project called The Demi Ramo Show. Um, we went through some drama-filled events together not with each other yeah other people you know yes yes you didn't have to go into that part i was just talking about the <laughs> music, the, music, the the video the, the, the interview yes the dining room show stay yeah. tuned yes. we have some really cool guests coming up yes we do and of course guys you can watch and listen all past episodes of it's real with jordan demi on spotify youtube iHeartRadio, facebook Twitch, wherever you watch or listen to podcasts. And of course, follow me on Instagram at Jordan Edward Studio. Follow Demi at Demi underscore Ramos. And one of these days, 
we're going to get the TikTok going for real. <laughs> it's my responsibility. I got it. <laughs> but until then, watch our content and follow us. And uh, we really appreciate it. So until next time, we'll see you later.